Yo, my name is Benjamin and this is Custom Cursors in Framer. So without further ado, let's dive right in. As you can see, we currently just have the native desktop cursors on this page. And we would like to replace it with this custom component. I will double click into it to show you how it's set up. As you can see, we have a bunch of different variants here, starting with a pressed variant that simply scales down the circle on mouse down. And then there's a few variants where we show these different titles of sites made in Framer. And we would like to animate between all of these seamlessly. Specifically, as we press down, I would like the circle to scale down. And as we hover over the different cards, I would like the cursor to reflect the proper title. So how do we add our first custom cursor? To start, I'll select the entirety of the page, our desktop breakpoint. And then I'll head over to the new cursor property in the property panel. Here we can pick between a web cursor, which is the existing CSS based cursors or the new custom cursor feature. I'll select the custom option and here we can select any component to become our custom cursor. So I'll type label to select the component we just looked at. And then once selected, I can pick any variant to start with. So the default is just fine. And then we can decide to either have it follow the existing cursor or to replace it entirely and to add a transition, which we'll look at a bit later. So I'll close this pop-out and let's give this a preview. As you can see, we have successfully replaced the default cursor with our own little component. And as I click to press down, it animates to the pressed variant. Yet on hover of these cards, nothing happens just yet. So how do we switch to the correct variants on hover? I'll select the first card here. I'll head over to the cursor property and this time I'll pick set variant. Framer knows that this page already has a cursor defined and it allows me to simply switch its variants without having to redo all of these settings. So I'll go over all of these cards, select set variant and simply pick the matching variant. There are no settings I have to redo. Everything gets inherited from the page cursor. And just like that, if we now give this page another preview, we'll still have our custom circle and on hover, it seamlessly transitions into our label, showcasing the title of each site. So that's how you can replace the native cursor in Framer with a custom component that has a pressed variant, as well as multiple unique variants to animate between. But sometimes you don't want to replace the cursor entirely, you just want something to follow it. Let's have a look at how to do just that next. So I'll switch to the next page in our demo project, where we have a different custom component. This one is semi-transparent. It also scales down on press and it has a subtle background blur. So very, very simple. I'll again select the page. I'll then head over to the cursor property. I'll select custom cursor and I'll find this outline component. This time I'll set the cursor property to follow instead of replace. And here we can customize how to position our cursor relative to the native one. I'll set align to left. I'll keep position set to bottom and I'll add a negative offset of minus 16 for both X and Y, effectively centering our component. We now get this transparent circle following our cursor around. But how can we make this feel much smoother? 
by adding a transition property. I'll click add to add a new transition to this cursor. And here we can customize properties like stiffness and damping to create unique transitions for our cursor. Let's see how this one feels. Now we get this subtle sort of delay, a custom spring transition between the movements of the circle. It doesn't just change its position, it animates to different places. So let's tweak the transition to be a little less bouncy, a little slower. And maybe let's make that even slower with a lower stiffness and a higher damping. And there we go. The component is following our cursor with super smooth transitions. And it still animates on press as well. So that is how you can add layers to the existing cursor and how you can work with custom transitions. We've designed this feature to be extremely flexible, allowing for a wide variety of use cases. So next, I would love to run through a few different use cases and show you the unique setup of each. Starting with videos. Your cursors don't have to be static layers, they could even be videos. Plus, you can be smart about how you use variants. For example, you can design your own enter and exit animations just by designing a hidden variant. So you're animating to and from a specific variant that you control, but isn't visible just yet. So if we go back to the page, I can quickly show you how this one is set up. It has the video applied, but set to the hidden variant. Cursor is set to follow. It's placed at the bottom left with 40 pixels offset each, and it has a transition. Then on the graphic here, we have a hover effect and two cursors, one setting it to a normal pointer cursor and the other switching to the video variant. So let's see how this comes together in the preview. Initially, it's as if there isn't a custom cursor at all. And then on hover, the video animates into view, already playing, looping seamlessly with a custom transition applied on top as well. So for some use cases, designing a custom hidden variant is a really fun trick, giving you full control over how layers animate in and out. In the next use case, I'd like to cover two unique details. One, you can also use effects in your cursor components. And two, you can also apply custom cursors without having to set it on the page level initially. So here we have this emoji card. Each one has a subtle background animation using blur and a loop effect. Plus each variant also has an appear effect. If I then inspect the page setup, you'll find that there is no cursor applied to the desktop page at all. And instead, we have applied unique custom cursors to each of these text layers and have simply picked the exact same component. This means you could even use entirely different components for your cursors on a single page. And if we give this a preview, you can see that these cards have subtle animations and they switch seamlessly as we hover each individual layer. The main takeaway here is that you don't have to use a custom cursor on the page level first. Now it does give you a few benefits, like the ability to use set variant as we showed earlier, but if you just want unique components in specific sections of your page, you're also free to set it up like this. This next use case has no unique setup, and instead I would like to say a few words on transitions. Your cursors can have multiple transitions, one for the following and another for any animation that happens within your component, whether that's a variant animation, a nested component, or an effect. All effects and animations in Framer are built on top of Framer Motion. 
our incredibly popular animation framework. We shipped several updates to Framer Motion to unlock features I'm showing you in this video. This enables you to design animations and transitions of an unparalleled fidelity, which I think is incredibly exciting. Let's move on to the next use case, which is video controls. If I hover over the video, a play button appears. I can click to start the video. The icon turns into a pause icon, even after moving away from the video. So the cursor is aware of the state of the video, and this is made possible with just a few lines of code. The two takeaways here are, you can design cursors to control elements of your page, and two, you can mix in a little bit of code to make them stateful. In this next use case, let's have a look at how to set up cursors for custom interactions like dragging. This shows another unique setup. This cursor replaces the default and it's quite large because we want to include both a custom cursor and a label. To make this work well, I've ensured that the endpoint of our cursor sits at the perfect center of our component allowing us to use the replace feature without messing up hover states or selection. It becomes a hand in the second variant, the label animates, and on press, it becomes a grabbing cursor. Plus, you can see that this pinwheel layer has a bunch of effects plus a set variant applied to the cursor. So let's see all of this in action. We have this large cursor on our page here, on hover, it shows a hand and the label animates its color. And on mouse down, it becomes a dragging cursor and we can move the pinwheel around anywhere. And if I release the cursor, it automatically switches back to the initial variant, even without having to move your mouse first, which is something we explicitly added support for. The takeaways here are, if you're designing huge cursors with additional labels to replace the default, make sure that the cursor is centered. Plus, you can mix cursors with any of our effects to design truly interactive cursors. The next use case highlights how you can use different creative components within your cursor. Here, I'm using the animator from framer.supply and the R component available in the insert panel to design this custom animation on hover. Next up is blending. We made sure to support different blending modes in the cursor feature, which you can simply apply within your component. Here it's set to difference, which in this demo file is a pretty cool effect because all text stays legible on hover. Next, your entire cursor can actually also be based on code, allowing you to create an infinite amount of custom implementations. Like this demo where the icon transforms based on the location of your cursor. And this brings us to our final use case, defining cursors within components, allowing you to design all sorts of unique sections like this custom carousel. The cursor itself is very simple a circle with two variants, showcasing an arrow each. What's unique is that this section itself is a component where I've defined clickable areas to show a unique cursor, as well as switch between variants. The cursor isn't defined within the component, but instead it has been assigned a variable. There are two cursor variables here, one called left and one called right. In the first variant, this clickable area is assigned to the right cursor variable and has an interaction that switches it to the middle variant. In the middle variant, we have this clickable area that now also gets a cursor variable, the left one, and an interaction that switches it back to the initial variant. And this is repeated throughout. Simply put, only the first and the last clickable area have the cursor variables removed and also have no interactions. This is how we control when the cursor should appear within each variant. The photos are grouped in a stack 
and the component itself is a stack that simply changes the distribute property per variant from start to center to end. Combined, this creates our custom carousel that only shows arrow controls when applicable and automatically goes back to the page default when we've reached either the end or the start of our carousel. And that was the final extra use case I wanted to cover. The custom cursor feature in Framer is easy to use, yet it is incredibly versatile, unlocking a wide variety of new use cases and creative setups. We're super excited to share this feature with you and we can't wait to see how you'll use it on your site. If you want to learn more, you can find a free remix link to the demo shown in this video in the description down below. That's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more updates coming soon.